Everton have been given the heaviest points deduction in Premier League history. It's a ruling which puts them at serious risk of relegation and it's a judgement they also intend to appeal. But what have they done and how have they reached this point? In the middle of November, it was announced that Everton had been handed a 10-point deduction for breaching the Premier League's profitability and sustainability rules, also known as PSR. The club were referred to an independent commission in March for alleged breaches relating to the 21-22 season, and a hearing took place over five days. Only the second time such action has been taken after Manchester City were hit with more than 100 financial fair play charges last season. Premier League rules dictate that clubs can lose up to £105 million over a three-year cycle, although certain addbacks, including losses caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, expenditure on infrastructure, community projects or women's and academy teams are permitted. During last month's hearing, the Premier League argued that Everton's cumulative losses for the FFP cycle ending 2022 were at £124.5 million, £19.5 million over the limit. Now, despite initially denying any wrongdoing, Everton eventually accepted that they were in breach by a smaller sum of £9.7 million, but claimed that they were entitled to substantial mitigation. According to the Commission's report, Everton cited several factors as mitigation. Among them, their costly stadium project and a difference of opinion over how loans to fund the scheme should be accounted for, the impact of COVID-19, primarily on their ability to sell in the market, the unexpected termination of a key player's contract due to unforeseen events and their transparent cooperation with the Premier League. Everton also argued that they'd been almost uniquely affected financially by Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February last year. At short notice, they were forced to suspend sponsorship agreements with companies linked to sanctioned oligarch Alisha Usmanov. In their submission, they detailed too how they'd scrapped a stadium naming rights deal with one of those entities, USM Holdings, that was worth up to £200 million over 20 years. Initially lined up to come into effect in 2025, the club said that they had been in negotiations with USM before Russia's invasion of Ukraine to bring the agreement into force early in 2022 instead. One of the main bones of contention was Everton's treatment of loans relating to their new stadium project. In the absence of an external debt package, they had largely relied on loans from the club's majority shareholder, Farhad Moshiri, to fund construction costs for the £760 million development. Everton Stadium Development Limited was set up as a wholly owned subsidiary of the club, but remained entirely dependent on intercompany loans from Everton. In the club's 2022 calculations, they said loans to Everton Stadium Development bore financing costs by way of interest and arrangement fees. Yet the Commission decided the club had been less than frank in their submission and had considered this to be an aggravating factor in their culpability. Ultimately, the Commission and the Premier League took a different view on how the club came to breach the regulations. Everton's understandable desire to improve its on-pitch performance led it to take chances with its PSR position, the Commission concluded. Those chances resulted in it exceeding the £105 million threshold by £19.5 million. It added, the position that Everton finds itself in is of its own making. The excess over the threshold is significant. The consequence is that Everton's culpability is great. Everton's PSR trend over the relevant four years is positive, but we cannot ignore the fact that the failure to comply with the PSR regime was the result of Everton irresponsibility taking a chance that things would turn out positively. It was also argued that Everton's failure to sell Richarlison for more than £60 million, £20 million under what they'd initially forecast, was a key part of their non-compliance. The Commission ruled that all the numbers involved constituted a serious breach of the Premier League's FFP rules and that any punishment should be significant as a result. So, how have Everton responded? Well, in a statement on Friday the 17th of November, the club said that they were shocked and disappointed and described the 10-point deduction as a wholly disproportionate and unjust sporting sanction. Everton maintained that they've acted in good faith, regularly liaising with the league over their PSR position. The Premier League placed Everton under several financial restrictions from the summer of 2021, including what was effectively an informal salary cap. All deals, including transfers and contracts, had to be approved by league officials before they were finalised. The club believe they complied with those measures and that those efforts have not been properly taken into account. Everton have also noted the Commission did not determine this to be a deliberate breach and pointed to the three-man panel admitting that there was no sporting imperative in the circumstances. 
not least when other clubs had, in effect, been able to capitalise similar capital-related expenditure. As such, the club's position is that a sporting sanction, such as a points deduction, is not an appropriate punishment. And there is a feeling, based on the Independent Commission's use of the word deterrent, that they've been unfairly used as a scapegoat, while other clubs go unpunished. Everton have indicated that they will appeal, with an outcome expected before the end of the season in May. Everton maintains it has been open and transparent with the information it's provided to the Premier League and it has always respected the integrity of the process, reads their statement. The club does not recognise the finding that it failed to act with the utmost good faith. The harshness and severity of the sanction imposed by the Commission are neither fair nor a reasonable reflection of the evidence submitted. The club will also monitor with great interest the decisions made in any other cases concerning the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League football story that matters, TheAthletic.com puts you inside football. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.